to the point about men having an emotional release during sex or turning to a woman for in, in a surrender, state of surrender, and seeking comfort for her in that, yeah. with that mothering energy. Yeah. How profound an experience is that for a man yeah. on a one-off, or yeah. is it something that he can continue and you know achieve greater healing yeah. with? It's important to understand, first and foremost, that in a relationship, a man is usually the most masculine and a woman is the most feminine. So you're usually going to be having a normal type of sex where there's female penetration. Because there's less feminine energy in the masculine, that means that um, he is not going to, um, it's not going to be attracted to that as, as much. It's going to ebb and flow. Okay. Now, it's very important to realize that being held in that way can create like whole relapses to being mothered, but also um, a, a level of feminine surrender in the masculine body of being held by the earth and it's super, super special. That's the ultimate epigenetic healing I feel. Yeah. So that's why it's important to realize that the most ultimate state of healing can happen from men to women, women to men, or you know, masculine to feminine. It's pretty cool. Now, when it comes to um, prostate massage, it's it's really interesting in the sense that we live in a culture where there's a huge amount, huge amount of shame in that area of the body. Okay. So when it comes to pleasure in that area, if a man is aware of pleasure in that area, he's gonna feel a lot of shame about it because of Christian fundamentalism taboos, right? Projected at him all the time. So. If that's compounding shame, or he's actually been abused, if a man's been abused, he's going to have the same traits as a woman who's been abused. Okay, so he's going to have a hard time connecting with people, hard time trusting, a hard time feeling relaxed. You're going to have anxiety. You can have like suicidal tendencies. Um, it's very important to understand that, say, like in Lower East End, Vancouver, this is the poorest postcode in North America. Um, Eighty-five percent of the statistic is of heroin addicts have been sexually abused before they were addicts. Okay, so the easiest way to deal with this sort of um, compounding review of a negative event on your timeline is to sedate yourself permanently or deal with it and then you don't need the medication. When you deal with it, your genes change, you're not, you're not the sort of person who needs to be on the, the opiates anymore. Now, it's very important to realize as well that, um, so men who've got like, uh, say, pleasure around that part of the body will often be the most anti, the most homophobic, right? Um, and that also if men really enjoy that sort of stimulation this is this is so paramount here it's like there's a knife edge between your greatest shame and your greatest turn on they are right beside each other and the reason for that is when you're feeling extreme pleasure you're releasing the shame so if a man is traumatized or he has a lot of fear shame guilt and anxiety around his prostate for one, it will create a hardening of energy. The emotion will harden in that area. If he's been raped, then that can be even worse because there's physical impact and the emotion afterwards where he feels like it's his fault, etc., etc. There's sorts of themes there. So I feel the largest cause of prostate cancer in our culture is actually um, Christian fundamentalism projected at the male prostate, okay? Along with the sort of physical abuse, but the emotion. Because cancer is a hardening, is a crystallization of trauma and emotion and it gets blocked there and not released. That is why that sort of shame, if a man is, is moved in that area, he can actually start to move that, that energy and it, it can be the, an extremely orgasmic state. Now to experience that in a safe relationship where you feel safe with your female partner or male partner in your femininity, then he can completely heal his body because that actual total orgasmic state that can occur in that situation can start to be directed at different things in the body as well. And um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's massive. Um, there's, there's facilitators at Mantuck Chia's retreat in Chiang Mai who talk about this on a bit of a deeper level, if you want to get into that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, really, it's really incredible. It's, it's just amazing to recap that these, these, this is the normal conversation before Christian fundamentalism in our culture, right? There's a bit of a difference here. Like say in Libya, where you have a Muslim culture predominantly, um, a lot of young men's first sexual experience is, um, this is what I've heard from a girl who grew up in Libya, is with other boys. You know, and that's actually quite normal. Mm. And there's less projection around that. And then if in the Taliban culture in Afghanistan, there's a lot of that thing where they, the, the leaders would groom young boys as dancers. If you look at kite run and stuff like that, where it's actually quite normal to trade young boys before pu puberty as a, as a sexual commodity, you know? Um, so it's, if you look at basically if someone's being commoditized like that, once they reach puberty and they're rejected by their, literally their owner um, in the Taliban culture, then they, they, they are basically psychosomatically ruined if they don't heal it. 
yeah, because they've got long-term compounding issues around that. But maybe because they're not supposed, they're not exposed to Christian fundamentalism, the shame might be less. Mm -hmm. But you still have physical impact trauma, which can create blockages in that part of the body. Again, it's important to notice that, like um, the latest inquiry into institutionalized abuse in Australia, particularly in churches, um, there's churches, um, there's sects of Catholic ministers that were in charge of looking after children with learning difficulties in boarding schools and they were like the the assault rates are extremely high so the most um, vulnerable children were hurt the most by these ministers and that the um, the actual statistics on that are very alarming when it comes to looking at a culture that has a massive amount of sexual trauma in the prostate and how this is linked to the male autonomic nervous system and is completely altering mm -hmm. his body epigenetically on a cellular level and in chemical like chemically like I gave a guy a hug once and it was after a retreat and it was in the dandy dogs and I was going to give him a hug and he was super awkward about the hug like how to do it you know he's about 40 something and he said oh I'm just starting to give hugs a go for the first time mm -hmm. and he went on to explain that he'd been systematically raped as a child and that can you understand that your nervous system is so altered through the prostate brain connection that you think that human contact is definitely a threat threat and it's not even by choice again this is the subconscious this is 95 percent of our emotional responses to an outside stimulus yeah which is a misperception because he's having a hug it's fine but his brain is perceiving it as dangerous 